After Investor Day, Sandy Monroe was all agog over hairpin motors, but what are they? Plus, how is Tesla going to fit the side panels to the main body if they don't do spot welding? Joe Tegmeyer has some evidence about how that's going to work. And is Tesla bot CGI? I will stake my reputation that it's not. Let's take a look. Hey, y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So first of all, I just want to point out that there is like <laughs> basically a tornado about to happen in my backyard out there. So if you hear hail and rain and things like that, sorry. I'm a little compressed because I'm leaving to go on a ski trip to Utah tomorrow, but I really wanted to get this video out before then. So forgive it if it sounds like the, the world is coming to an end. I'm just glad this is happening today instead of tomorrow when I'm flying. So that's good. Okay, so we're going to start with Joe Tegmeyer, who was very, very kind and wrote me after Scott and my video this this morning as I record this yesterday as you all see this but we were talking about the new parallel feeding method that Tesla is going to be using to build they called it parallel slash serial and how they're going to be building the car in modules and then feeding that all and putting it together at the last minute so Scott Walter actually had a much better metaphor than my chocolate chip cookie one he was saying it's like if you're trying to make a dish if you tried to hold a serving tray and put the plates on and actually construct the dish while somebody was holding the plate, as opposed to having people make the salad, make the main course, make the dessert, make the soup, all of that stuff, put it on the tray at the last minute and put it out the door to the to the customer, right? It's much more logical to build the pieces, you know, in pieces where people could individually work on things and then put it together at the last minute. But the problem is the reason why it was cars were always built previously, like put it together then paint it, then take it all apart, then take the internal parts and put them inside the vehicle and then put all the stuff back on again. It's kind of insane, but it's in order to do spot welding before you do painting so that everything works properly because you can't really spot weld after you paint. So anyway, Joe Tegmeyer was kind enough to point out because we were like, we don't know exactly how they're going to put it together if they don't use spot welding. This is evidence from Investor Day that he was able to get. And you can see here on the left that these arrows and actually up here too, that basically there's just nuts and bolt fasteners. And one would imagine there's probably also some sort of gasketing system or something like that because, uh, you know, body on frame trucks and things like that, one of the problems that they have is if you don't gasket that, if they're just held together by fasteners, they can get very squeaky over time as the parts start to slide against each other. So more than likely, there is, and that's one of the reasons why you do welding instead. But so more than likely, there's some sort of either a sealant or a gasket. Uh, Scott thinks that it's a, a gasket because sealants are liquid and gross. And, you know, we're going to talk more about painting and stuff like that in a future episode. But anyway, that seems to be the case. And that is super, super good news. And, and basically means as long as they can build these things with the tolerances that are correct, so that they all fit together properly, which is kind of you know, the baseline level of how they're going to have to do this. Once they slot this together, it's just zoot, 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 and they put these things on and Optimus could do this. You know, we saw Optimus with a socket wrench going zoot, and putting these nuts into bolts, really no problem at all. So this is something where a human or Optimus can work on this very, very easily, efficiently and rapidly. So speaking of Optimus, Scott and I did a video yesterday. It would have been two days ago as you see this. I'll put a link to it up here if you're interested. But we did a thing about the Optimus video from Tesla's Investor Day. And apparently a lot of people do not believe this is real. So I have gone on the record a couple of times. I'm going to say this again. I have been doing professional you know, computer animation and teaching it since 1996. So 27 ish years I've been doing this. I will stake my reputation that this is real for many, many reasons. So anyway, unfortunately I have to turn the audio off because I'll get a copyright strike because YouTube is crazy about that stuff because there is audio in this, in this video. But anyway, what I did was I turned on uh, Elon Musk's commentary here. So we have the, the arm, the optimist, he comes in, he unplugs the cable. Amazing. Really cool. Proprioception. This is very nice movement here. Also, we have, you know, Elon says here, we have a whole lab full of arms and legs. So just watch what he's commenting on all this stuff. We move forward. It's moving. <laughs> As Scott noted how awkward this sort of this movement is. It's also overcompensating. It's doing the Gibbs function. It's basically oscillating as it comes in. And then, yep, this version of the, so he said, okay, well, hold on. Let me back up just a little bit. Bearing in mind that when we did AI <laughs> day, this version of Optimus didn't walk at all. So 
here we have Elon specifically saying that these are real. This version of Optimus didn't walk. Remember that Bumble C was the one that did walk, not the, not this version of it. So this this didn't walk. He specifically said that. He also said, you know, so the rate of improvement here is, I think, quite significant. So what we're getting, and then he says it doesn't do parkour like the Boston Dynamics ro uh, robots and stuff. So in addition to my eyeballing this and saying this is not CGI, because I've seen a lot of computer animation, good, bad, indifferent from students and other professionals. And of course, I have to do it myself and try to make it as real looking as possible. So I have a really, really trained eye. I'm just telling you that. It doesn't look like CGI. There's a lot of evidence for that. It is, you know, it's nicely lit. It's got, you know, key lighting and things like that and some mood lighting in the background. But anyway, aside from that, Elon Musk could be taken to court and, and thrown in jail, like AKA Trevor Milton or <laughs> like Trevor Milton, because basically he's saying here, these robots are walking, they're utilizing tools, they've made a lot of improvements. He's referring to these as if they're real, which would be under the auspices of an official event like this, that could be considered fraud because it could be considered stock pumping. Sort of like rolling a truck down a hill, hmm, something like that. So not just my own personal professional opinion about this, that this is real and there's a lot of clues for that, specifically in the motion, but also in the details and stuff. And actually, if we play this forward a little bit further, you'll see that this close up like there's a lot of detail here in these actual fingers and everything that's quite, quite real. But anyway, the motion of it is definitely not human, not mocapped, not animated, et cetera, et cetera. But also beyond that fact, Elon Musk could face going to jail if he was talking about this and lying about the fact that this was a computer rendering without specifying that. And when they did AI Day, they definitely did an evolution of the of the robot walking where it started off very, very still, no moving its upper body and stuff, all the way up to a more you know, more elegant type of walking that it's doing now. Not not perfect walking by any means, but it's that was identified as a render as it obviously was. This was not, this isn't. <laughs> Again, I'll stake my reputation on it. If somebody wants to debate me about that, then we can have a debate online or something like that. But you know, this this Elon Musk would be in really big legal trouble if he identified this as real as he's doing right now and it was a computer rendering. So even beyond all of my opinion stuff, you know, this 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 is definitely real. So I'm giving you that. Again, I can never say 100% because I didn't witness it myself, but again, 99.99% sure that this is real. So anyway, I just want to lay that to rest that this is real stuff. This is really going on. This is super impressive. There you go. And then finally today, I want to turn to an article that PJ Weddle of friend of mine on Twitter, so thank you for sending this along, sent me about hairpin motors. If you haven't seen it, Sandy Monroe had a rant about this at Clive Bar after Investor Day, and apparently he was sworn to secrecy, and he was like, you can't keep me quiet anymore, I don't know. But anyway, he was talking about hairpin motors, and I have to admit, I was like, what the hell is a hairpin motor? It turns out that they're actually really, really cool and very, very important, and this will allow Tesla to manufacture better, more efficient motors, probably without the need for rare earth metals. This is probably one of the main reasons why they're able to create a motor that won't need rare earth metals for the next gen vehicles. So the obvious thing here is this looks like a hairpin, right? You just take something and you bend it. So that's, that's a hairpin motor right there. So why would you want something like this? First of all, let's look at traditional motors to get a sense of what things used to look like. So in this illustration here, and of course I will leave a link to this entire article in the description so you can read it because I'm not gonna go over the whole thing. So what do we have here? What is the difference between a traditional motor and a hairpin motor? A traditional motor uses copper wire that is round. <laughs> Basically a really, really, really long thin cylinder that you wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap. Whereas a hairpin actually uses something that's more of a square-ish shape so that you can pack more things in more tightly. So let's get into the details a little bit more here. A hairpin motor is an electric motor whose stator winding is done with hairpins instead of round wires. Hairpins are rectangular and large compared to wires. Their rectangular shape allows for a better fill factor, meaning that the copper windings make better use of the space. In other words, they're about 20% more efficient. 
So why does this matter? Well, if you have something like a permanent magnet motor, you've got a stator, which is the part that stays still around the outside, and a permanent magnet on the inside, which is just magnetized with a north and south pole or a bunch of them actually. And then what you do is you induce magnetic fields by running electrical current through the copper coils in the stator, which causes the rotor part of the motor to actually rotate, which makes your car drive or anything else that you're doing. So the more tightly you can pack the copper wire or the copper hairpins in this case, the bigger the magnetic field you can get. And the benefit that you get out of that is that you can reduce the size of the stator and you can also potentially not have to use rare earth metals in your magnet, which is something that Tesla talked about at Investor Day. So this is an enabling technology that will have huge benefits for motor construction, for making them less expensive and more efficient and more powerful than they could have been using traditional round copper wire. And here we get a nice graphic of this. So you can see that the round wire, this is a cross section up here, this top down thing. The cross section shows that round, like round things in cross section or cylinders can only pack so tightly. There's gaps. There's all these little white spaces between the packing of the wiring. And so that means every single white space that you've got is useless. It's just air or a fluid or something like that. So it's not being used to generate a magnetic field. What you really want is something that packs in tight. And anybody who's ever used boxes versus bowling balls or whatever, you know, if you have boxes, you can stack them really, really tight together. Whereas bowling balls or ping pong balls or whatever, they, you know, there's lots of gaps in between. So there's only so tight you can get it. So basically that's what we're looking at. And if you look at down at this cross section down here with this hairpin type of winding, they're, they're squarish and obviously they're kind of interestingly offset and I don't know the engineering behind it, but basically that allows them to fit together like boxes. So in general, they're just squished together much more tightly. And if you look at the upper picture with all the little air gaps, all the white gaps, and then down here with very, very little white gaps, and also apparently these coils, the, the whatever, the hairpins are significantly thicker than traditional copper coil. So you can see traditional copper coils like that big or here up here, it's like the width of a human hair-ish, something like that. And here you can see that the copper that this is made out of is much bigger. It's a rectangle, but it's also really big compared to the size of traditional copper windings. So what you want in this case is the biggest magnetic field you can get from the stator, and that will allow you to drive the rotor at the most efficient manner possible, given the amount of space you have and the types of materials you're using. So again, this article goes into a lot of details about how electric motors work and stuff, so I highly recommend reading it. But here we go, the blue highlighted part right up here. The advantages brought by hairpin motors are making electric vehicles more competitive, not only with previous generation of EVs, but also with combustion engines. So basically it's more efficient, cheaper, better motor. And by the way, this picture is from Lucid Motors and they are also using hairpin motors. So <laughs> FYI about that. And they have extremely high-end efficient motors that they're using. So what are the benefits here? Due to the better fill factor, the additional copper generates a stronger magnetic field just because you can pack more into the same amount of space. This allows a stronger rotation of the rotor and more torque at the wheels. A better fill factor means that the stator can be smaller. Energy losses when the electric current goes through the copper, called copper losses, are minimal. This is due to the optimized winding path, identical and symmetrical shape of all winding turns. I don't even pretend to know the engineering details of that, but if you happen to, definitely let me know in the comments in more detail about what that is. I think it just has to do with the way that they shape it and how they fit on top of each other, but I'm a little ignorant of that part of the whole thing. Next up, the electric motor can use less energy to produce the same amount of power, which of course helps extend the vehicle's range better for the battery. The symmetrical and solid shape of hairpins make them easier to wind than round wires, which simplifies assembly a great deal. That's something I didn't expect at all. I figured that would be more difficult, but actually probably because they're so much thicker. I mean, that stuff, you know, if it's like human hair and it's miles of this stuff and you're trying to wrap it, it's just, <laughs> it's a nightmare to do that. I've done it, you know, with much, much simpler things and it's a huge pain in the butt. So apparently this makes constraints constructing the winding simpler as well, which is another huge benefit. Next up, round wires need stitch cords to hold the winding together, a process known as stator lacing. This is not required for hairpins. And if we go up to this lovely picture from Lucid once again, you can see that the stator lacing is this white stuff that's around the outside and you don't need it for the hairpin motors. So super, super cool. Also, hairpin motors have a lower risk of failure in the long term. This is because their larger, more solid conductors are less affected by vibrations. And that's really cool too. 
Next up, hairpins can carry more current than round wires, and that makes sense because they're bigger. This better efficiency generates less heat in the windings and in the motor. This simplifies temperature management and improves the reliability and lifespan of the motor. Definitely good things. And finally, unlike round wires, hairpins can be precisely positioned, leading to a much cleaner design. And again, if we refer to this picture again, you can see how they're being positioned and like kind of moved around in 3D space, whereas the windings over here are just, you know, looped around. <laughs> it's just sort of its own thing. So this is actually very cool that they can be manipulated in space to generate the best possible magnetic field. And then finally, if you're concerned, why wouldn't these things leak electricity between the copper windings? Here you have the explanation. Same thing as copper wires. Like copper wires, copper hairpins are coated with protective varnish called an insulating layer that prevents the electric current from going in all directions when hairpins touch. Hairpin staters typically use one of the following varnishes, blah, blah, blah. So in short, after looking at hairpin motors and realizing just how amazing they are, I can see why Sandy Monroe was so excited to see that Tesla is using hairpin motors. This is going to be a huge step change and gain in the efficiency, power, and lower construction cost, and also longer longevity of these motors. And that is all to the good, especially when they start looking at building these less expensive cars or robo taxis that could easily be driving a million miles in their lifetime. All right, so that was a lot of stuff to cover today. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it fun and interesting and thought provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. Super, super close to 50,000 subscribers. Probably it's going to happen next week when I'm out of town. I will do my best to do some videos in the meantime, and hopefully what you'll get is at least some cool mountains and some snow in the background. So we'll see what happens, but I'll do my best to do a couple of videos, but expect production to go down a little bit in the meantime while I'm on a vacation that I I definitely am looking forward to. And of course, if you want to help support the team in the meantime, check out the Patreon link in the description, join the team, join the discussion on Discord. There's a lot of cool stuff going on, and I look forward to meeting you soon. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have TeslaBot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next